Apple takes a bite out of Chomp, Photoshop goes iPad, and the stumble sharing with the newly updated StumbleUpon app for Android, all coming up today on App Judgment. This episode of App Judgment is brought to you by Ting. Hello and welcome to App Judgment, your source for mobile app news and reviews. I'm David Prager. And I'm Matt LeBate. Our first story today is about a company called Chomp. Have you heard of Chomp? I have heard of Chomp, but uh, only because of my Android device. Tell me more so, about it. So Chomp is basically for app search and discovery. It's a search engine. It's been around for a few years. Uh, it's got some pretty cool functionality because they've got contracts with a company like Verizon to do and power all of their search. But what's really cool about this acquisition, I think, is it's Apple making the decision that they want this technology to revamp their the way that you search and discover apps so discovery. specifically on iTunes. That's right. So discovery is always the big problem. This mm -hmm. is helping Apple to add to their suite of products that helps. Yeah. Apple. So I think they acquired it because they wanted to revamp that. They like the technology, and I think Ben Kieran and his team are really talented, and they're interested in taking, you know, that team as well and helping them build and, and redevelop that. Um, one of the only negatives about this, aside from you know those founding guys getting a chunk of Apple's uh, massive uh, cash reserve. Which good for them, is, and congratulations, guys. Is that Chomp also powered a lot of really quality Android search. Right, and so I'm going to miss out on that. So we assume Apple I'm will. I'm guessing that there's probably a space for a really cool uh, new company to come in there to help enable app discovery on the Android. Right, so anyone who's entrepreneurially minded might be able to start a new yeah, startup. Yeah. So that maybe Google will buy. Absolutely, yeah, we'll see. So <laughs> uh, the next story we've got today is uh, one of the hottest new apps that's being used and it's called Instamatch, which is based on Instagram. Instagram. That's right. So it's sort of like memory, that mm -hmm. game memory where you flip open a card and then you uh, have to match it with another card that you flip open. And if, if you didn't find mm -hmm. the right one, it'll put them back over and then you have to remember where they all are. And all of the images are based on either your images or other images from the community. And I think one of the neat twists is instead of matching the photos complete, if you know the guy in Yosemite took a picture of his double rainbow, and then you happen to take a picture of a rainbow, you're matching those rather than the exact same thing, which I think adds some cool creativity. More thematic than actual exact photos. That's right. Um, although I thought it'd be nice if it was uh, friend-driven or, or who you were following and mm -hmm. who was picking from your actual social circle instead of across the entire platform. So I think, I think there's opportunity for them to you know build you know build out how the algorithm works. Right. And it's a hot game. It's pretty fun. It's 99 cents. Um, and if you're interested in puzzle games, but also like photography and Instagram, uh, we say give it a shot. Yeah, and absolutely. Speaking of images and imagery, um, there's been a popular tablet uh, app out there for the Android based on uh, based on Photoshop, uh, and now it's finally available for the iPad. So the official Photoshop Touch for the iPad for ten bucks. Uh, I'm not a huge Photoshop user, but maybe that's good because this app, the first thing I noticed is it's got a bunch of little tutorials to teach you some of the cool uh, tricks that you can do in touching up your photos and enhancing photos and editing photos. So it's, it's from basic touch-ups. Touch it's basic touch-ups and then filters that you can apply to your images. Yeah. Um, can you get Instagram-like photos? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know offhand the filters on there, mm -hmm. but you have a little, I mean, I would think that you have more power and you can manipulate in ways that Instagram would never do. Right. I mean, you can change colors of things, you can tweak the way, you know, you can erase certain parts of it. It's great the way that you can isolate different aspects and elements of a photo the way you would expect Photoshop to do it. I think the, the biggest thing that I've seen that people don't like about it is that a lot of people that are using Photoshop are really big into images, and you can't edit images bigger than 1600 by 1600. What, but for the iPad, this will be for people who aren't already doing Photoshop on their MacBook Pro or what, or their tower. I, I, so I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So uh, before we go to our next story, though, uh, stumble upon, we want to tell you a little bit about our sponsors. Ting. And Ting is really interesting because Ting solves a problem that I really have a big problem with, which is my every month I pay a big bill to mm -hmm. a phone company and I have to sign a year-long contract. And the founders of this company were thoroughly frustrated with dealing with the major mobile phone company providers uh, and, and the getting cumbersome bureaucracy. a bill that's mm -hmm. got a million things on it mm -hmm. and having a contract that you can't get out of that's right. and having to pay you know, too much for too little, or not enough for just not even getting what it is. All that of you the do. things that we uh, are frustrated with with all of our phone services. So, so what, what is Ting? What so, did they create? So Ting is an alternative to your mobile phone service provider, which is amazing because they purchased a bunch of spectrum from Sprint. So wherever Sprint works and all their 4G and all that stuff, you can get that directly from Ting. But they threw out all the old rules and built it from scratch the way they would want it. It's super clean and neat. You pay for however many minutes you use, however much bandwidth data, data you use, right. and however many tech 
text messages you use. That's right. And you can go to their website and they even have a calculator. So you can go in there and say, I think I'm going to spend, you know, 300 minutes talking, 700 to 1,000 text messages, and, you know, 2 gigabytes. And they'll say, this is what your bill is. But and if you don't use it, I'll if you don't use it, you can say, I think I'm going to use this. And if you use a lot less, then they bill you for whatever the closest variable is, whatever the closest, you know, if there's a 100 minute plan, they'll bill you for that. If you use and then you have minutes. the rest left over for and the next if you, month. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you'll, yeah. Have the, you'll, you'll pay less money. Yeah, that's right. And then if you use more, they'll just pop you up to whatever you happen to use. If you ever have a problem, you can call them. Their customer service is mm -hmm. actually their real people. You don't have to go through the menu and tree to get there. And they'll just pop right on the phone with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, the, the calculator on their website's great, but the entire, the, the design of the website is as neat as the design of the, what their bills are. That's right. And so if you go over there and use their calculator, but also go to ting.com slash app judgment, they will give you $50 off a device. So to sign up, you got to get a device. You have to buy the device and, first. And they've got a bunch of awesome Android phones over there. So but get your purchase you with the discount. If you go to slash outjudgment, 50 bucks off the device, go check it out. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. I'm excited to use it. I'm excited it. too, yeah. Okay, and next we're talking about StumbleUpon, which uh, is a new app that was just announced um, recently. Uh, it was a result of an announcement that Google did at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, mm -hmm. uh, where they asked app developers to uh, integrate New features from ICS into their apps. Yeah. So, so for example, StumbleUpon integrated mm -hmm. NFC, yeah. um, uh, which is near field communication, which you use Android Beam to share content um, uh, with your friends uh, in near connection to each other by yeah, putting yeah. the phone right next to each other. Uh, in addition, they also added on brand channels, which is, um, for example, ESPN can create a curated uh, stream of stumbles um, that. Uh, you can follow. Yeah, well. so if, you, if you're interested in ESPN type of content, they're the curators. You stumble upon the things that they want you to stumble on. That's right. Uh, going back to the uh, ICS, Ice Cream Sandwich, I think it's really interesting that um, StumbleUpon took it upon themselves to tackle one of the more interesting features in Ice Cream Sandwich, and that's near field communication. And they want you to be able to you know, share stories with someone near you. I think. I think so. It's gimmicky, right? Because NFC is a is a fun gimmick. Everyone likes to kind of do this thing with their phone and, and bump it and I get think, something. Yeah. Right? I don't. I don't know if NFC is a fun gimmick, or I don't. I don't believe it's a fun gimmick. I personally, and maybe I don't understand what Stumble's intent with it is, but I think it's a gimmick for using it on Stumble. I love StumbleUpon. I love Reddit. I used to love Dig when I used it more, but I don't think I would use NFC when I think about discovery of internet content. Yeah, it seems to be a weird place to put NFC in. When I say mm -hmm. gimmick, I think it's they're putting the feature together as a uh, as a way to get you yeah. to use it, right? Yeah. As and also as a way to use this, you know, this thing that Google wanted them to do, which is to integrate features. Yeah, and um, so I think they got they probably got some love from Google. I think that they're able to they have a lot of cool features in the new Android app, including the branded channels and the ability to follow brands that you're interested in. But they got all the headlines by integrating NFC, so maybe it was worth it. Anyway. It's a PR move, maybe. Yeah. So what is NFC used for? Because I've used it for like. Um, Buying a soda at the airport. I'll wave it yeah. in front of the vending machine. I mean, with I Google Wallet, for example. I, I, I'm waiting for entrepreneurs to step in and do more cool things because I think you know it's like kind of like the social. Like, yeah, I mean, there's well, like the social, but you know, when when Bluetooth came out, probably darn near a decade ago or more, something like that. Um, People didn't know what it was. People didn't use it so much. Now, I mean, the layperson knows what it is. They're using it to connect wirelessly to their stereos. They're mm -hmm. using it mm -hmm. to, you know, control devices across the room. Uh, I think NFC has it will open up doors for a lot of uh, developers and a lot of entrepreneurs to create ways for not only doing payments, but for you know affecting things that are near you, kind of like RFID, but a little bit smarter. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the feature, it's that killer app that needs to be created still for NFC in order to make it the household name. Yeah. And yep. it's one of those technologies that's an, an adopted standard mm. that is, as far as I know, available to any develop any hardware manufacturer to integrate into their device and to be exploited by software developers like StumbleUpon. Right. Well, and just to go back to StumbleUpon, overall, I think it's a great usage of the, the technology of StumbleUpon. I do use StumbleUpon. I like it. It's mm -hmm. a fun uh, ADD s service for me, Yeah. Um, being able to get stuff and, and just have it kind of go into this deep world of, of yeah. stumbling. So this is now in your in your hand, and I and I like that yeah, um, yeah. as well. And we want we want to know what you guys think. What do you what do you guys want to see out of NFC, and, and what are your thoughts on what's been done so far? Please write us at appjudgment at revision 3com You can hit us up on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Crosswalk. We've got a great community there. We'd like to build it even more. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'm David Prager, and I'm Matt LeBate. We'll see you next week.